the Media Deserts project is one that um, has begun to look at the concept of um, what is happening in our news and media system and understanding a little bit more about what we can do to be able to um, create some interventions around what's happening in the media system. So I'm going to share a little bit about the project with you. Um, so Media Deserts um, is a project that uses um, GIS data to be able to create a climate map of media system change. And the project uh, started about uh, two years ago, um, probably a little bit longer than that, as we began to do work with uh, journalism that matters around looking at what was happening in the larger news ecology and how we might as an organization uh, create uh, some systems change around that. The Media Deserts project is one uh, piece of that that I've been working on that uses GIS tools to map media deserts. That's places where fresh news and information is lacking. And the project really began out of what we've seen in the industry in terms of, of newspaper layoffs and news cuts. And um, this is a map from Paper Cuts uh, blog that shows you uh, some of the closed newspapers that have happened since 2007 to 2010 on this map. And these newspapers represent um, a sizable amount of, of resources in terms of people that have been laid off, but also a large amount of content in terms of 120 newspapers that have, uh, plus newspapers that have now ceased operation since uh, 2007. And so the Media Deserts research looks at this particular period of time as well um, and examines um, what's happening particularly with newspapers and newspaper circulation. And so the working definition that we're using for this project is what is media desert? It is a geographic area that's lacking fresh news and information. And we believe that condition can be a result of a variety of factors, one which might be uh, the lack of a, a daily newspaper or a weekly newspaper, but there may be other conditions such as a lack of access, uh, whether through broadband or radio or other different types of media technologies. It may be an issue of language barriers. Um, and so um, we use the definition media deserts and the term media deserts because it's much broader than news deserts, which deals strictly with content and not necessarily access and other issues. And this framework comes from the work of Lawrence Lessig, um, who's a researcher in this area, and he looks at the code content and conduit layers of communications architecture. And media deserts, as a definition, captures all three of those layers, not only in our thinking and conception of the definition, but in how we're creating this dynamic uh, systems map to be able to help us understand and what's happening at each of these levels. So the code layer can deal with language or spoken languages. It can also deal with policy issues. The content layer can deal strictly with news, and that's where news deserts would come in, but can also deal with government information and access to that, as well as uh, the visual information that might be shared across various networks. And the conduit layer can deal with newspapers as a medium, radio, mobile, uh, it can also deal with internet access and other different types of uh, technology such as RSS. So um, this is a much fuller definition that helps us understand the complexities of what's happening in the news and information system and really help us come up with more nuanced interventions at the local level that can help us solve the particular geographic needs of a community. So when we look at what's happened historically then, 100 newspaper, 120 newspapers have ceased operation. And the goal of this project is really to help monitor the system over time and help focus attention and resources where they're most needed. The project um, stems from some work that I'd been doing around news as food and using food as a metaphor for what we do in the communications field and particularly in the news industry and the concept of slow news, um, which I've also been developing to look at different processes for how we might do our work. This particular mapping system is modeled after some work that the USDA has done around food deserts. Um, that map came out about two years ago, almost two years ago this summer. 
and um, was instrumental in helping communities focus on where food deserts exist in communities, where people lack access to fresh uh, food and produce and then um, help ameliorate, ameliorate those systems with transportation, with bringing in food hubs, with providing resources to vendors to distribute food differently in those communities. And so that map really helped to catalyze conversation and community action around access to uh, fresh local food. The, we hope and I hope with uh, the Media Deserts map to be able to do a similar type of thing. Uh, create a dynamic a national map that lives on the web where people can put in um, an address or look at a particular geographic area, find where Media Deserts exist, and then focus community attention, whether that's local foundations, local municipal leaders, local newspapers, and local bloggers around particular geographic areas that still do not have access to fresh news and information. Um, the first layer of this project in our, our prototype looks at North Carolina specifically um, and looks at daily newspaper circulation. Now this is print circulation, it does not deal with the online uh, circulation, um, but our prototype of this particular project strictly deals with um, daily newspaper circulation across uh, North Carolina. And the idea is to build out this map and include network analysis that would help us look at the blogosphere and help us look at the online news aspects of newspapers, as well as look at hyperlocal online news organizations that have cropped up in the cracks in between legacy media. Um, we are also working with researchers across the country that have already built out uh, broadband access layers and are also looking at broadcast layers as well. And so this systemic map would be a mashup of a variety of different media, um, i.e. conduit layers of the system, as well as help in looking at some content analysis that would help us dig deeper in terms of the news and information aspects of what we'd like to look at. So here's a prototype of the North Carolina model that uh, we've been working on for the past six months. And this model looks at 12 newspapers that, uh, daily newspapers that cover the geographic region of North Carolina. Um, off to the right, you'll notice some white areas that represent uh, waterways in North Carolina. But you can also see in some of the, the land areas of North Carolina where there are areas that are white that represent uh, potential media deserts. So our model looks at that period of time when we saw what I call the great contraction, which was a loss of jobs and contraction of newspapers across the country, and particularly in North Carolina. And we can look at the change from 2007 to 2011 and see the red areas, which represent a heat map of areas that have lost the most circulation in that particular period. Um, what we wanted to do was look at the area as a whole, but also dive down a little bit into a specific area and try and begin to examine um, what those media deserts look at look like and the change over time. So we zoned in on the uh, Piedmont Triad region of North Carolina, which is one of the third largest geographic areas in North Carolina and is typically covered by the Greensboro News and Record as a daily newspaper in those areas. And we see here a circulation map from 2007. We see a circulation map from 2011 where we see um, a significant drop in circulation. And if we're to translate that back to the heat map that we saw later, um, earlier of North Carolina, we can see some significant drop off in circulation. When I began this project, I began to look at the concept of, of media deserts. Um, my thought from having worked in, in newspapers for many years uh, was that we would lose a circulation around the fringes. What um, I had experienced, as well as many others, was that as newspapers were beginning to consolidate and try and reduce their debt over time before layoffs, um, what they typically would do is um, either close down or reduce their staffs in their external bureaus on the fringes of their circulation area. And we see some of that happening as we look to Randolph, uh, Montgomery, Moore, and out here into other areas that were typically covered by the newspaper. So we do see some of 
um, the perimeter areas being um, really trimmed as well. But I was also surprised to find that in the core areas, the core urban areas where um, the newspaper resides and where they have their highest density of circulation, um, that there was also significant drop off in circulation in that area as well. So I described this as the donut effect where we see the exterior uh, deteriorating over time and then we also see the core area of their circulation declining over time as well. Um, what we've looked at for this particular region is contrary to our original hypotheses, um, the newspaper lost the most subscribers right in their backyard. Um, we then analyzed the locales within those areas, specifically around some demographic areas. What we want to look at is what do these communities look like and begin to come up with some topologies of uh, different communities and perhaps interventions that might work in uh, similar communities that have those characteristics. So um, we looked at education and income level and found that there is a very weak positive uh, relationship between um, median household income and change in circulation and then also uh, on the education um, factors as well we saw a positive relationship there as well with education and uh, circulation drop and so these are, are consistent somewhat to, with the uh, data that shows um, that higher educated and uh, higher household income people are the ones that typically subscribe to newspapers so um, it's consistent with our previous data um, but we also find that um, that um, there's some additional data that we'd like to look look at, in particular uh, factors around ethnicity, um, to see if particular communities are also losing their aspect to this particular uh, access to news and information. So um, that gives you a summary of the project and where we are right now. The goal is to continue to build out this map, um, creating a national map, and we're in the process of building a more dynamic model, particularly of North Carolina, that we can build across the country. And then uh, work to be able to continue to build out additional layers of the GIS mapping system that will help us understand the complexities as well as the challenges in creating interventions in these media deserts.